Okay, so welcome to another round of Is California as Bad as the Right Wing Says It Is? Because we know that they just can't stop yapping about how terrible California is. And this time I'm I'm going to actually, I think, do the topic a little bit more justice. I'm going to talk about some more specific critiques as well as the sort of general ones. And uh, then we'll, you know, look a little bit more into, you know, the deeper issues. And there's the same caveat that I made with the previous episode, which is that when, when we're talking about California, it's a, it's a bit of a trick because a lot of the issues that California faces are not just unique to California, of course. So when we're talking about that topic, that general location in the United States, you'll hear about high taxes and cost of living. The critics argue that California has high state taxes and a high cost of living, making it difficult for many residents to afford housing, health care, and other essentials. That being said, some people seem to make it work. You know, that's what I would say about it. Just like with any other state, you know, there are some people who somehow, some way seem to get by just fine. And uh, other people, they seem to struggle for one reason or the other. And that's not only true of California, but it's true of my state of Michigan, or it's true of so-called red states or whatever. It's true of other countries as well. You know, you can have little pockets of poverty and also areas where people are doing just fine. Or you can have like large areas of poverty and little pockets of wealth. You know, it all, it, it's, it's all a little bit more complex than saying, oh, it's just this place that's like that. Or, you know, trying to pin all of these issues on one specific cause. You know, that's often not how these things work out. Although sometimes, you know, if you do some sort of investigation, you can find some causes that are more relevant than others, of course. So, you know, another critique is the uh, regulations and business environment. They, you know, the uh, right-wing critics claim that California's stringent regulations and business environment can be detrimental to economic growth and job creation. Of course, at the same time, it seems some environmental regulations make sense, lest you want something like a BP oil spill happening every five minutes, which that sounds almost like a cartoonish exaggeration, but it's actually kind of not, <laughs> you know, because people definitely have a lot of man-made disasters. And, you know, some of them we don't always even hear about on the news. And, uh, you know, there's, of course, some homelessness and poverty in California. You know, California has challenges related to home homelessness and poverty, you know, in some urban areas. And I'm sure, you know, there are some more rural areas of California, too. And, you know, some will st cite the state's high cost of living as a contributor, but... Again, you can have a high cost of living pretty much anywhere in the country or uh, in different parts of the world. There is usually no single cause of it, you know, unless you want to kind of exaggerate or oversimplify. Because, I'm, I mean, really, if you want, you could say, well, capitalism is the main reason we have a high cost of living because... I mean, that is kind of true. I mean, without capitalism, things wouldn't really have a cost necessarily, right? I mean, because that's that's how we measure things. Uh, we measure things by putting a price tag on them. That's what the uh, capitalist system basically requires. That's one of its fundamental characteristics. And, you know, it's what we're dealing with. Um, but, you know, it's... It's one of those things, like, if you want to look at California, it's it's not all bad. You know, I mean, there's there's even some, 
you know, uh, sort of fanciful history elements of the state. You know, they, they call it the golden state. You know, it's had a booming economy. It's obviously played a huge role in the entire, in the entirety of, you know, media within the cultural creation of movies and whatnot. You know, it's had a huge impact on people's lives. And basically anyone who says that's been solely a bad thing, I don't know, they're probably a little bit foolish, I would say, because, you know, I mean, how much do you want to oversimplify, you know, the, the entirety of the American experience to the point where, where you would say, oh, movies don't have anything good about them or TV shows or celebrities don't have anything good about them. I mean, the, that would be sort of a cartoonish oversimplification. And uh, I, I really don't want to go down that road myself. And, you know, it's it's called the Golden State. It earned that nickname originally from the California Gold, Gold Rush. Um, so that's another part of its history. So, you know, th there's a lot of, uh, I don't know, history to it that, you know, People shouldn't be so quick to brush aside. And uh, you might be saying, oh, my God, enough already about, you know, like defending California. What about their runaway energy costs? You know, the energy transition, as it's been called, is something attributed to the uh, high cost of energy in California but it was also notorious as a state for privatizing its energy and deregulation, courtesy of lobbying from people like Enron, you know, the uh, infamous corporation that uh, was part of a huge scandal. So it's, uh, it's not really satisfactory to say that, oh, it's, it's all due to, you know, environmentalists you know, they're the cause of all of these high energy costs. You know, again, it's not really, it's, it's not really accurate to, to say that that's like the main reason. If anything, like you could, you could look at California as an example of privatization running amok and driving up costs. And, uh, you know, that's something that has been proven if you look at uh, their energy crisis, that wasn't that wasn't something you could accurately pin all on environmentalists. And then critics will say a bunch of jobs have been lost to legal immigration, and this will always be according to some anti-legal immigration group uh, or another. But of course, in reality, the average industry actually benefits from immigrant labor, as do consumers. And immigrants will often do work that native-born Americans don't tend to gravitate toward anyway, as we have seen from, you know, recent uh, developments in uh, the, uh, you know, the COVID era. You you saw a lot of a lot of these same people complaining about, oh, all these these jobs are empty and va vacant. Well, wait, how can that be? Weren't immigrants taking all these jobs? How can they? How can they all be vacant, if uh, if no immigrants are swarming in to steal them all? It's almost like that was sort of a myth or a lie, you know. And uh, sure enough, factually, it was. And it's always been just a cartoonish, stupid stupidity to uh, you know say, oh, it's it's all the the fault of the immigrant. It's a convenient way to scapegoat people. And uh, of course, the average immigrant is even less powerful than the average American citizen who is his or herself already lacking power and, and all that. You know, I can go, I could go on about how like a lot of these people making these critiques are claiming to be Christian, even though Jesus in the Bible made so many different statements that were actually pro-immigrant. You know, he was actually encouraging people to op openly embrace immigrants the way you would embrace your own neighbors and stuff like that. So, uh, you know, it's a lot of scapegoating. Convenient for, uh, 
you know, self-serving politician to make a lot of these immigrant bashing claims. And it also makes it so that they don't really have to seek any actual solutions to these problems or anything like that. You can just say, uh, the immigrants did it. You know, it's, it's sort of like, uh, if a, if a holy man is sinning and he's caught, well, you can just say, oh, it was Satan and demons that uh, led me astray, you know, like, but I'm all better now. You know, I was tempted into sin. Like, <laughs> there, there was some uh, preacher, I don't remember if, if it was in the 80s or the 90s, I think it was Jim Baker, the husband of Tammy Faye Baker, but he, he had some sort of scandal. And I... Uh, there's a famous clip of him saying, I have sinned against you. Like, <laughs> like he was so repentant or whatever. There, there was some sort of scandal. I don't really remember the exact nature of it, but it's, it's like that, you know, like just have tears in your eyes and, and that sort of thing, or, you know, spit venom at some sort of um, scapegoat. And uh, you've built, basically a straw man that you can hack away at. And, uh, you know, lastly, I know many liberals and people on the left want to say environmentalism will create power. You know, uh, it'll create newer and better jobs. But I do sort of wonder if that's missing the point. Even the United Nations Environment, Environment Program, or UNEP, they say that the greening of economies is a new engine of growth and a net generator of decent jobs, and as such is a vital strategy for the elimination of persistent poverty. So, you know, I hate to be a cynic, but that sounds like it's a little bit too good to be true. But, you know, I would say that even if it's not a, you know, an eliminator of poverty or a creator of decent jobs, I still think there's validity in moving further away from fossil fuels and maybe at the expense of sounding too much like Ted Kaczynski. You know, maybe environmental degradation will ultimately force people into seeking solutions that don't really rely as much on modern technology anyway. I think that as natural disasters pile up on top of each other, people are going to be left scrambling for improvised plans and temporary alliances with strangers and whatnot. And they will need to make lifestyle choices that don't rely as much on modern technological convenience anyway. So I, I just realized that I said technological kind of funny there. That I just got jumbled up with my words. Um, you know, just strike that flub from the record. But anyway, uh, obviously... You know, uh, that issue extends well beyond the topic of California, but that state is obviously also going to be in the same boat as the rest of the world as crisis upon crisis presents itself. So, you know, on that cheerful point, have a nice day, and I'm sure I will return eventually with more cheery topics related to California. And, uh, yeah, try to stay safe and sane out there, whether you live in California or anywhere else.